Hello and welcome back to the shop. I'm Susan and I will be going over how to create a material test array in Xtools Creative Space Software version 2.0. This will be a step-by-step -step process that will be helpful for anyone just starting out using Xtools Creative Space Software or upgrading to version 2.0. So if this is something you want to learn more about, then stick around, think about subscribing to our channel, and let's get started. So today I'm working on a Windows-based computer, and I already have Xtools Creative Space 2 open on my desktop. So the first thing you want to do when creating a material test array in Xtools Creative Space is come up here in the upper right-hand corner and click on New Project. Once this opens, we'll start working on a material test array. But one thing you need to know before you start anything is what material are you going to be using and what type of test are you going to be doing? Are you going to do a score, engrave, or a cut? Now, one thing to remember when doing material test arrays, you can only use these for vector type engraves. You cannot do bitmap engraves for these, so note that when you're doing a test array for an engrave. All right, in the upper portion of the screen, you'll see Xtool F1. That's the laser that I currently have attached to my desktop, and you can see that it's already connected. So the first thing you want to do is come over on the right hand side of your screen. You'll see under material, user defined material. That is what you want your material set to. You do not want to come in here and set a specific type of plywood or metal business card or anything for your test grave. If you do that, Creative Space will automatically set the power and speed for you. And that's, we don't want that. We want to set those ourselves. So, definitely want to use user-defined material, not their recommended settings. After you set the user-defined material over here on the right-hand side, you want to come over to the left-hand column, third item down, and you want to select a shape that you want to use for your score, engrave, or cut. I'm going to select a rectangle, and I'm going to create a small rectangle on the screen. Now you can make whatever shape you want. It's up to you whatever you want to use. Just make a small, I'm going to use a small box. I'm going to highlight it and then I'm going to come back over here in the left hand column again. <clears throat> click, click on applications. Click material test array. And as you can see in the background, it's already created a basic test array and it's come up with its own speed and power settings. Now, I don't want those. I want to be able to insert my own, so I'm going to show you how to do that. When you look at the X, which is the columns, that is going to be your power. So your power is all the columns, and you can see below what they currently have it set to. The Y is the rows, or the speed, for your, your test engrave. So I want if you come down here into the columns and rows, I want five columns and I want five rows because that's the number of different power options that I want to test and speed. Um, I want the minimum for my power actually to be, if you highlight it or double click on it, you can change it and I want to enter five. If you come up here to maximum, I want my maximum to be 25, so double click on it type in 25. As you can see it's changing the power settings below. Now let's do the same thing for speed. I want my minimum speed, double click, to be 100 and my maximum speed to be 300. And I double clicked on it, typed it in, and hit enter and it changed it for me. Now it's it's automatically incremented it based on the amount of rows that I have 100, 152, 100, 250, 300. Now you can change those even even though you put a minimum and maximum maybe that might not be the midpoints that you want to test. You can go in and change these once we get out of here and I can show you how to do that also. So now that this is done click OK and you can see that you have a test array now on your screen. So if you click off of it, you'll notice that it shows a score, a test, Xtool F1. It shows the speeds that I wanted. 
and it shows the power, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Now, these are what I want, but it may not be what you want. So, first thing you want to do is click on this to highlight it, and you want to ungroup it. That's how you make changes to the array itself now that it's been created. So, ungroup it, bottom right-hand column, <clears throat> click off, and we want to click on the top. Double click. I'm going to change this from score backspace and then I'm going to type in engrave because that's what I want to do. Now, the power settings on the left are what I want, but say you don't want this to be 200. All you do is highlight it, double click. You'll see the cursor is now on the left hand side and you would just backspace and change it to whatever you wanted. Click off of it and it'll make the change that you want. You can do this for any of the power or speeds. I'll show you when and then I'll change it back. Like this is 200. Say I want to do 175. Type it in, hit enter, whoops, not enter, and then just click off and you're done. And it's now changed it to 175. I'm going to change it back to 200 backspace, 200, and there you go. You now have your speed settings and your power settings. The next thing you need to do is click on the box at the top. If you come over here on the right hand side, you'll notice that the processing type is set to score. We want this to engrave. It's, used, it's a user defined material. So we'll go to the easy set panel and open that up, click on that. The laser type is blue light for me because that, that would be correct because I'm using wood. So we definitely want to use a blue light laser, not the IR laser on my X-Tool F1 when engraving on wood. So power is currently set to one. We know that's not gonna work. <laughs> so I'm gonna try it at, I'm gonna come over here, double click, and set that to the highest setting that I've put on here, which is 25. I'm going to set it to a speed of 200, middle of the road, pass. I want to only do one, and I'm going to do lines per centimeter. And I want these boxes to fill in a little bit better, so I'm going to increase the lines per centimeter up to 180, 200. Let's try 200. Okay, so we'll leave it on bi-directional. That would be fine. So 25, 200, 200. We're going to remember these settings because we're going to reset the engraves on each one of these. So close this down, select this, change it from a score to an engrave. Click on the easy set panel. We put the power at 25. We put the speed at 200 and we did the lines per centimeter at 200 and we click close. Now, one thing you could do, you can do it the way I'm showing you where you click on each one individually or Windows allows you to click on more than one. So you can click on this one, hit your shift key, click on the next one, hit your shift, hold down your shift key and click on the third. So now we've selected all three of these. We can come over here it shows a mix because I only set two of them already. I have not set the bottom one. So let's set them all to engrave. Let's open up the easy set panel. And instead of mixed, let's give it a 25, a speed of 200, and a lines per centimeter of 200. So now what I set here will set all three of these. Okay, so now we can close the panel. Now, we also need to set these to engrave because I want those to show up on the wood. So I'm going to click on this one, hold my shift key, click on the next, click on the next, click on the next, and click on the next. Over here on the side, you look at a processing type. We currently have score. We want to set that to engrave. And we're going to go through and set it to the same thing that we set our headings on the side. So power of 25, speed of 200, lines per centimeter of 200, and click off. Now we're going to do the same thing for the power numbers down here. Click the first one, hit your shift key, and click on the next one 
across the row. Come over here, change it for processing type from score to engrave. Hit the easy set panel. Click here, we want 25, 200, down arrow, and click on 200. Now that set all of these and they will all engrave at the same power and speed. So we click off and there. Now we've set all the headings on the top, the side, and the bottom. We've also hit all of the defined settings, power, speed, and power on the bottom and the side. Now we need to work on each of these individual boxes. We're going to work on speed first, and then we're going to work on power. Remember, speed works on the rows. Power, we work on columns. So we'll click on this one, and we're going to click across for this row, because we're going to set the speed of 300 for all the boxes in this row. So we want them, again, we need to set the process, processing type from score to engrave. Come down into the Easy Set panel. Now, what are we doing here? We're setting just the speed. So we're not gonna worry about the power it's at the blue light laser, which we want. So we're just gonna worry about the speed at this point in time. So double click here and we're gonna hit 300. We are gonna set the lines per centimeter up to 200. The power for this column, or this row, I'm sorry, the power for this row will be set later when we come and do each one of these columns. As you'll see as I go along. So we'll click off of here. We're gonna to go to the next row. Click on the first box. Hit shift key and click on each individual to highlight everything in that row. Come over here, processing type to engrave. Easy set panel. We're going to double click on speed. Set it to 250. Set the lines per centimeter up to 200. And we're done with that one. I'm going to do the next three. Okay, so now I've finished up with all the rows doing this, setting the speed. So now let's set the power. We're gonna work with the first column here. So we're gonna select the top one, hold down the shift key and select the rest of them in that column. We're gonna come over here. They're already set to engrave because we set them to engrave when we set the speed. We're gonna come down here, click on easy set panel. We're not gonna worry about the speed. We're only gonna worry about the power. We'll double click on that box. Hit five, because that's the power that we want for that, that column. Our lines per centimeter is already set, so we are already done. We're gonna go to the next column. Click on the top, hit the shift key, and select them all. Come over here. We're already, like I said, it's already set to engrave. Open your easy set panel. Hit the, double click on the power, and set that to 10. And close your panel. Come over here. Click on the top, and I'm going to do the next three columns. Okay, now, now we've set all the headers to engrave. We've set the speed, the num, the parameters for the speed that we have on the left and the parameters for your power on the bottom to engrave and we've set each individual box to the speed in this row and the power in this column. So if we click on this box individually, we open the easy set panel, now you'll see that this one is set to a power of 5 a speed of 300, which is what it should be, and then the lines per centimeter is 200. If we move over one, you'll notice that it increases to 10, but keeps the speed because it's still in that row. Now, if we go down one, we should have a speed of 250, which we do, and a power of 10. Speed of 250, power of 10. Everything's remained set to the blue light. Everything's remained set to engrave, okay? The next thing you wanna do is 
highlight everything on the page, and group it together. Now, why did I do that? Basically, it makes it easier to resize, which is what we're going to do. Right now, this entire uh, material test array has a width of 2.1 inches and a height of 2.193, which is about the size that I'd like it to be, but I'm gonna be a little bit more specific. I'm gonna just take it down to two inches. And unlock it and make it two inches the other way. The little icon here on your right, it locks the aspect ratio. So I don't want it to keep the aspect ratio. I want it to be two inches because I don't want it very big. I'm just going to use a small piece of wood. So now that I've set it to two by two, I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it right in the middle of my F1 screen. You can do that. See that line that came up? And if you move it over that line that came up, your crosshairs, it's telling you that you are centered now on your workspace on your F1. So the next thing you need to do is hit framing. As you can see, you'll see the purple line that goes around that shows you the framing of where your material test array is going to be engraved. So you need to take your material and center it, center that framing on your material. Once that's done, you go over to the side and click stop framing. Next, you want to align your laser. On the top right hand side of your F1, there is a silver button, and if you move it back and forth, it will raise or lower your laser. As you can see, there is a red dot and a blue dot. When you focus, you want to focus your laser on top of your material, and this needs to be done every time you change your material. So you want them to align one right on top of the other. And that focuses your laser again on the top of your material. And you come over here and hit process. As you can see, it will show you the path that it will go through to engrave this entire test array. It's saying it's going to be no total time estimated. It's going to take um, one minute and two seconds. This should be done pretty quickly. So if we hit we hit start. It's now sent the file over to the F1, and you hit the button on the top right hand side of the F1, and it will start engraving. Now, before you do that, make sure that your shield is down and shut. This is like wearing a protective eyewear, and then you'll hit your button, and it will start engraving. Once it's done, we, I will come back and show you what it's created. Now the test array is done, you can see what it's created. It's engraved the headers on the top, side, and bottom, as well as the power and speed settings. And you can see, based on the speed and power, where it looks better. I've already looked at it, and I think this one is what I'm going to use, and it's a 25 power with a 200 speed. I hope you find this, found this video helpful, that it helped you understand a little bit more about how to create a material test and grave in version two. Um, if you like the video, click like below. Think about subscribing to our channel, and we'll see you next time at the shop. Goodbye.